Yesterday here on the program we spoke with Father Rod Bauer, the Anglican minister whose Sunday service was disrupted when the right-wing Party for Freedom stormed his church on the New South Wales Central Coast. The anti-Muslim party says it draws its inspiration from One Nation and it uses a photo of Pauline Hanson as its profile picture on its Facebook page. But now One Nation has distanced itself from this provocative stunt and said it has nothing to do with the Party for Freedom. Nick Foltz is the party's chairman and was the ringleader of the protest on Sunday. Nick Fox, welcome to RM Breakfast. Oh, thanks so much, friend. How are you going this morning? I'm very well, thank you, Nick. One Nation has come out and yes. said it's got no affiliation with your party. It says a yes. church is a sacred place and should not be violated. So even yes. your heroes have condemned what you did. Yeah, I read the statement that Paul and Hanson put out yesterday, and um, they said it was counterproductive and, and that sort of thing, and there's no affiliation. And we never said there's any affiliation. We just put the picture up on, on, on Facebook and social media, sort of thing, of Paul and Hanson. Uh, a picture there that says pride and just sort of congratulating Pauline. And we, we've never said that Pauline was involved. In common sections of the media, friends said, oh, it was, we, you know, it was sort of in conjunction with One Nation. But no, we, we're our own political party, but we do support Pauline and, uh, and we support any other patriotic sort of party or group. And we're really glad that Pauline's been elected. OK, I, I get that. So you're not um, officially affiliated with them. But what about um, this notion that you violated yes. a, a holy place, a sacred place on Sunday? Yes. You up interrupted people in their worship. What right do you have to do that? Well, we did. We, we had people inside the church to make sure that we didn't interrupt communion. We had two people inside that went inside. No, but you and, interrupted um, a sermon. Oh, we did. We interrupted a sermon and um, we were at the back of the church. Uh, and when they did ask us to leave... We did leave. It was about three minutes we were inside. When we went inside, Rod knew pretty much straight away, um, you know, who we were, and it was sort of like a, a bit of satire sort of thing. Well, and hang on, hang on, hang on. You say it's a bit of satire. There were people mm. there, a congregation yes. there, praying. They yes. were there for some, some peace and solace and, and spiritual well, they support. The time and you, Rod was speaking. No, yes. no, no, you don't know that. They were sitting I in do. a church. They were sitting in a church. They were seeking some spiritual solace. You interrupted that. What gives you the right to do that? Well, as an Australian, it's freedom of speech, and um, I believe that we had to make an important point because Rod's been using the pulpit for many years as a social justice sort of platform, promoting Islam, and, you know, I was just sort of frustrated, and I was offended by the someone out there, this continuous sort of promotion of Islam. Um, and yeah, but I hang on, you're, you're just, to you just said point. to me freedom of speech is a right in this country, and now you're yes. saying that somebody putting a sign up means yes. that you can interrupt... The, the the worship of pe- a lot of those people, mm. according to Rod Bow yesterday, were very scared. They didn't know what was going on. He may have known. You might have been well, right, but they didn't. Multiculturalism can be like that sometimes. It can be very scary. And look, he should have embraced us. We were invested in Islamic gear. He should have embraced us. And you know there was no. No. There was no well, there was why no would you anger. embrace someone storming your church? Sorry. Well, he loves Islam and he promotes Islam, and we came as Muslims just letting him know that this is the future, because Australia is changing, friend. And the issue is that. We're frustrated this time, and that's why Pauline's been elected back in the parliament, because we're being disregarded by our government. There's so much Muslim immigration, promotion of multiculturalism, and, and a lot of Australians, including myself, just feel like we're just shut out of what's going on in Australia at the moment, and we're losing our country. Okay, so I, I understand that's that you're feeling. What I don't mm. understand how uh, how does mocking a religion, donning Muslim garments, and interrupting a Christian church service advances your cause? That's what I don't understand. Well, that's 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 fine. You know, we could just imagine if we were, we dressed up as Catholics and went into a mosque and did the same thing, we probably wouldn't come out alive. Um, but you know, like well, you wouldn't approve of, you wouldn't approve of that either, would you? Well, I, you know, I, I believe it's sort of it almost. Everything's not off bounds, and you know, and you know, there's certain things you can't physically hurt people, and we didn't touch anybody. And when we went into the church, we made our statement, and we left within a short period of time. And yes, some people were unsettled, absolutely felt uncomfortable. Um, and you know, it's just the way it is with protesting. You know, like we hold protests and different issues all the time, friend. Um, and we have the left turning up, and it gets very violent. I've been caught many times because I've been attacked by Muslims and communists and anarchists. I understand that, but that's when you go to a protest. These people are at church. Anyway, I just want to ask you, Nick, before we run out of time, I know you're at work too, but can I just be very clear about what it is you are against? Is it Islam or is it Islamist 
extreme Islamist militant well, Islam. Well, it's, 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 the, it's the political ideology, but of course the extreme Islamists, um, you know, that carry out these terrible atrocities across the globe. And I just find that, um, you know, the, the you know the elephant in the uh, living room, you know, like immigration is just a, a massive issue at the moment. And the more immigration that we have in, the more problems, and we've got to slow down on Muslim immigration. And we shouldn't be promoting Islam in Australia because I want to live in a secular nation and I'm not religious. Um, and I'm just saying increasingly because we live in this sort of secular country that there's a vacuum being created, Christianity is being criticised, and even Christianity... But can I just is, yeah. interrupt you then, Nick? You say you're, you're not a, a religious person, that's fair enough, but yes. everyone in this country has a right to their religion. Do you, do you accept that? Do you accept that, well, um, pe- well, that Muslim well, people have a right to pray in a mosque? Well, that they do, uh, and I wish that they, they would sort of reciprocate that sort of um, feeling um, for Christians in certain countries. There's not one church in, in Saudi Arabia. Now, there's a lot of t- Muslim countries that are very intolerant. Yeah, but we're talking about Australia, and we pride ourselves on our tolerance, but, don't we? But, but why are we tolerating the intolerance? Tolerance goes both ways. So if we tolerate Islam, they should tolerate Christianity and other religions in the Middle East in their countries, but they don't. So okay. there is problems, fundamental problems with Islam, and we can't disregard that. But uh, can, can, we didn't... Sorry? Can I just ask you finally... Yes. One nation, uh, in response to this, has warned uh, that at a time we will see, we are likely to see civil unrest on our streets because of the concerns that people like you are advocating here today. Yes, is, that, is that your plan to take this campaign, yes. this hate campaign, Friends. to the streets, from the church to the Friends. streets next? Well, we've been sort of on the streets for the last couple of years and the whole protest movement, especially last year, Friend, it really sort of, sort of, you know, it just bubbled up and there was a lot of sort of patriotic, patriotic passionate people out in the streets. And, yeah, definitely, and, and I believe that... There will be um, violence in the streets, not because of us, but the failure of government policy will reach a point like Western Europe and France where there's so much immigration and saturation and the decaying of the economy sort of thing that um, there will be there'll be frustration and there'll be different... It, it's terrible. Okay. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see violence. That's the last thing I want to see. OK, friend. well, maybe if you don't want to see violence, you shouldn't storm the church. But anyway, Nick Fox, thank you very much for joining us. You're more than welcome, friend. Thank you. Nick Fox is chairman of the Party for Freedom and the ringleader of Sunday's protest when they stormed the Anglican Church in Gosford. I could while away the hours, confirm with the flowers, consult them with the rain. In my head I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. I'd unravel every riddle for any individual in trouble or in with the thoughts you'd be thinking you could be another Lincoln if you only had a brain. He put himself under that, uh, uh, un- under that uh, oppression. Uh, goodness. Goodness. Gracious me. Hello there. Uh, just excuse me for one second. Just in case you're wondering, these people actually aren't Muslims. I hope you got that by now. This is what I talk about as being radical, radicalised Christianity. So we'll we'll deal with it. Just everybody have a seat. It's all, it's all good. Well, you could, you could, th- uh, it was the best sermon illustration I could have possibly. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Uh, you could have forgiven me for actually staging that, which I didn't. I wish I had of, but I didn't. Uh, I hope the police will... Um, that's a classic example, a classic example of, of, of scapegoating, uh, a classic example of, uh, of radicalised uh, thinking uh, that would... I, and I do apologise. I hope uh, it's, that's a bit upsetting and I, I, I hope we might just... How about we just spend a moment quietly and, um, and we pray and we try and find our centre once again. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into our hearts, our lives. Grant us the peace which the world cannot give. Grant us the peace that can come only from you. We pray especially for those people who have just invaded our space. We pray that you grant them peace. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the sermon was going so well, I thought. <laughs> I, 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 I thought, I'm on a roll here. I'm going to get where I want to go. And it's going really well. <laughs> hmm? That's all right, Dave. That, that's all right, mate. It's all good. They're not Muslims, Dave. <laughs> so, where was I? Well, one of the, uh, the things we find in scapegoating, of course, is uh, that when uh, uh, Jesus says, uh, after he says, I came that um, uh, I didn't come to bring peace, uh, I came to bring division, when you take away that scapegoating mechanism, and we see it in families, uh, what happens is uh, that there'll be conflict. That false peace is kind of taken away uh, and there'll be conflict. Uh, one of the ways in which we have, uh, uh, we've observed that, uh, I guess, in modern times is the, is the feminist movement. And I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a very good thing uh, that women have uh, sort of said in that movement, hang about, uh, we're not prepared to be the scapegoats anymore. Uh, we're, we're going to fight for our equal rights and our, our equal dignity. Uh, and uh, we're not going to allow uh, our families to sort of uh, scapegoat onto us and make us uh, do all the sort of things we don't want to do. Uh, and, uh, and so what's happened is there's been uh, an increase of conflict or visible conflict uh, in families. Uh, and, of course, the divorce rate has gone up. Now, nobody's saying divorce is a good thing. Uh, it's a very painful thing. Uh, but it is evidence that uh, uh, when we see that scapegoating uh, is exposed, is revealed, and people say, no, this is no good, uh, then, uh, uh, then we find that we get some conflict. Uh, what we've seen in the, uh, in the week that has just passed is that uh, I've been at the Royal Commission all week, and the bishop has copped all kinds of, uh, uh, of criticism and, 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 and he's been in all kinds of conflict because what he's done is that he's exposed through the ministry of the Royal Commission uh, what's been going on in the church, uh, often the scapegoating of the most vulnerable, the scapegoating of children. Uh, and he's copped a lot of criticism by people saying, oh, don't talk about this, uh, we just want to have that fake peace, uh, we want to have that veneer of peace, uh, we don't want you to talk about this anymore. Uh, and, uh, and the bishop, of course, said, well, we have to talk about this, and so you get that kind of division. When we hear Jesus say, uh, I came not to bring peace, 
uh, we say to ourselves, but isn't he the one who said, blessed are the peacemakers? And I say, yes, precisely, blessed are the peacemakers. He doesn't say, blessed are the peacekeepers. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. The peacekeepers are those, and we see it in families all the time, don't we? Uh, you know, kids, don't say anything, don't upset your father. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. That's the peacekeeping stuff. Uh, let's be the scapegoats. Uh, let's keep that going. Uh, Jesus did not say, blessed are the peacekeepers. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, and to be a peacemaker, you actually have to stand up and expose the injustice. You have to stand up and expose the, uh, uh, the scapegoating. And Jesus says, when you do that, you won't increase what you think is peace. In fact, you will increase what you think is conflict for a time until you work out uh, how you can create proper peace. René Girard, uh, as I said, one of the... Uh, uh, the great uh, theologians of the, 21st, uh, the 20th century said, Our human way of keeping peace is the scapegoat mechanism and exposed to sacred violence in the cross of Christ. It is gradually taken away from us as its effectiveness wanes. The basic part of Jesus' teaching then uh, was the revelation, the warning that violence would increase uh, as our own way of keeping peace is taken away, making his call for peace through God's way of peace, of love and forgiveness, even more critical. The revelation, he says, is not just an event, uh, invention. If we are without sacrifices, if we are not able to scapegoat, either we are going to learn to love each other or, he says, we are going to die. We have no more protection against our own violence. Therefore, we are confronted with a choice. Either we're going to follow the rules of the kingdom of God or the situation is going to get infinitely worse. Jesus calls us to not to be peacekeepers, uh, not to maintain the veneer of peace that allows for scapegoating, but to be peacemakers. The Lord be with you. He's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy!